All right, hello and welcome to game two for HTIC, How Do You Kill That Which Feats, I think, uh, versus Meow Meow Kitty Rangers, MMKR. And this time I do have Sari with me once again to serve as the analyst so I don't have to be a uh, one-man army in this game. Uh, you watched the end of the last game, right? I watched so little that I can't even say I watched the end of it. I saw them initiate onto PL with Bristol and Clockwork, and I didn't even see if they killed them or not. Um, he ran guys. up to the high ground stairs, and that's all I saw before I quit up. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Um, so MMKR are choosing to first ban the Lich here. This is the same as last game. Uh, they actually, their bans last game were very unorthodox. They banned the Lich, the Axe, and the Winter Wyvern for their first three bans. And it looks like they might be doing the same again. I'm, Axe ban is not weird to me. Wyvern is certainly weird. So were they, did they end up picking PL or was that the opposite? They did pick PL, yes. I don't even think Wyvern is that good versus PL. Oh, uh, no, they didn't pick well, PL. Actually, HDIC picked PL. Uh, MMKR banned those and then picked... Uh... I mean, you then always ban X, uh... even if you're not picking PL. I think that's <laughs> totally a legitimate ban. But yeah, like, if, you're, if your bans are set up for like PL or something, there's much better heroes that you can get out of the pool. Like, um... Well, my thought was those are all physical damage mitigation heroes, so they wanted like a really strong physical damage dealer, and then HDIC picked up Tidehunter and Dragon Knight. So, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. It's hard to. Well, yeah. I'll just let I'll just let that one go past me into oh, the they are. ether of consciousness. Uh, there's another Wyvern band. Fantastic. Well, it's nice to embrace the meta of this series. And see where that goes. <laughs> God damn it. Because I am already out of my element. In this <laughs> okay. 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 Not not to go too far on a tangent, but I am a little bit prejudiced already in favor of how do you kill that witch, whatever the rest of the name. It's already dead? It's already dead. That's what it is. Ah, okay. I'm already more in their favor as opposed to Meow Meow Kitty Rangers because the kitty is not capitalized, which I'm assuming was an intentional move to tilt their opponents, and I respect that, but I am also tilted. So. <laughs> but it's also capital MMR, clearly. Um, but actually, MMKR won the last game. <clears throat> So, oh yeah, they did pick the PL, because they were on, no, they didn't. HDIC picked the PL and denied them the last pick. Hurry, hurry. I don't no matter know, that was like an hour and a half ago, dude. <laughs> you are now picking. Um, <clears throat> but the window comes out first for MMKR, and HDIC actually banned for this series three heroes that were all, or with, for this game, rather, three heroes that were all picked up by Miyamoto Kitty Rangers last game, so. They want to play a very different style. They say, we... You know, we lost against you playing these heroes, so don't play these heroes. We'll try something else. Yeah. Um, and they pick up that Jakiro in response to the Windrunner. Uh, what do you think of the picks so far? <clears throat> I think the picks are very solid, very versatile. You never feel bad about picking a Jakiro first or second pick. You never look at your lineup and say, man, if we had a support other than Jakiro, we would have absolutely destroyed that game. You know, it's like... It, it, it can only be that bad of a pick on Jakiro. You got stun, you got harass, you can TP to a lane, counter gank, push someone if you have the capability. It's like, heroes like Shadow Shaman are nice because you got locked down, you got some harass. Um, and if you have the potential, you can potentially solo push a single lane if you ever get the space to do that or something, which is not necessarily going to happen, but it's always nice to have that opportunity. So. Picks like this are really nice for their versatility, and it goes for the same for Wind Ranger. You've got a lot of wave clear. It's pretty likely that you can get something from at least one of the lanes. Later on, you can reasonably effectively gank somewhere. Focus Fire is not a joke anymore. That skill is completely absurd. So I think these are both really versatile <clears throat> for Spix. Especially with the uh, Javelin Rush we've been seeing. <clears throat> it's just insane how much extra damage it actually gives you. Yeah, it's a little bit. Uh, it's 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 a for it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a spell. It's a spell. Yeah, uh, but the bristleback is then picked up for HDIC, so they're denying that as well from MMKR. <clears throat> so out of last game, HDIC have denied four of the five heroes that MMKR picked up, and the bristleback uh, 
So we usually see Bristlepack as like a fourth or a fifth pick, right? Because picking break heroes is fairly easy if you get in this early, yeah? Yeah, it's pretty easy. Um, <laughs> if I was Kitty Rangers right now, it's a little bit hard to like paint the rest of the picture with how little information I have of the draft so far. But you definitely don't want to just ignore this Bristleback. You don't necessarily mm -hmm. have to um, reorientate your t entire draft and plan around the Bristleback. <laughs> it being a second pick, you might as well adapt a little bit so mm -hmm. they don't just get an early pick oh, like that. Bad. For free, you could say. Oh, so they're gonna go for the Oracle. Interesting. Um, not a lot of hard lockdown showing from <clears throat> from either team, really. Uh, I don't. I don't think it's an awful pick. I kind of. I think there's plenty of ways that it actually works out pretty well. You can channel the root on Bristle. A Bristle that's not moving generally is not very happy about not moving. So that's mm. one aspect. And also, if you're going for something a little bit more zany, you can channel a root on a teammate that's going to be able to grab close, get on that bristle. The AoE of the root will also hit him, mm -hmm. you know. And the burst damage is not, it's not nothing, mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah, unfortunately, it does not purge those quills, so <clears throat> if that's what they're going for, they're going to be severely, severely disappointed. I don't know how I feel about them banning Huskar. I mean... It's an oracle hero, you know? It is an oracle hero. I'm just wondering if it's necessary versus the Bristleback. I think I think that can still go the way of Bristle quite easily, especially, especially if you're dual laning. Mm -hmm. I don't actually think they needed to be as super great as the Huskar as they were, but... So a Pudge pickup. <clears throat> What'd you say it was? How do you kill that which uh, does not... I, did, I didn't finish reading it, but judging by their portrait, the name is How Do You Kill That Which Is Already Dead, or something uh, stupid like that. <laughs> That's rude. But it is true. Well, I've just been going with their tag, H-Dick. Um, but they do pick up a Pudge here, so they are going to have that hard lockdown that we mentioned before, not really seeing a whole lot of. And... A lot of save against the Oracle Root as well. Um, and just a lot of HP to try to burst through. Like, Windrunner, you know, maybe you can get through the Bristleback or through the Pudge, but you're not going to get both, even if you're a major core, right? I mean, you're never really going for the Pudge <laughs> in that way, but, um, like, Pudge gets tanky, but he's not a tank, you know? Like, it's, it's hard to kill him, but it's generally not your goal. Mm. Unless, of course, like the positioning dictates that, or the rest of his team is dead, or you know, those sorts of things. But it's sort of like the support Kanka is tanky, but generally speaking, he's not going to be your target. I mean, it's less so in that case, but I think it's I, it's it's an interesting pick. Um, I think it's fairly solid for them because I mean, it go, it really goes both ways because like. Pudge can ult somebody, Oracle ults them back, then they can run away a little bit. But the nice thing about Pudge is that it really... Actually, this is starting to get a little more interesting. So, with Necrophos and Bristle and Pudge and Jakiro, your high ground siege is very slow, but it's hard to deal with it. Mm -hmm. It'd be hard to deal with it. <clears throat> so, ideally, what's going to happen for them is every time they try and siege a tower or like high ground or something, Pudge is always going to be looking for those hooks. And if he can hook anybody, that's how they want to start every single fight. Mm -hmm. Then they can burst them down. Necker can siphon if he needs to. And their burst damage isn't amazing, but if you get someone out of position, they're probably going to die, you know? So it's like the nice thing about Pudge is you can, in, in the best case scenario, you start every single fight with someone on the enemy team out of position. And then from that point, you just continue the siege, and there's almost nothing they can do about it. And right now, Meow Meow Kitty Rangers, <laughs> sorry to say that, uh, seriously. Um, their high ground defense is, it's not amazing. You've got Power Shot, you've got Blood Right, but coming up from Oracle and Wraith King, it's really quite mediocre. Mm -hmm. So you're definitely hoping <clears throat> as Kitty Rangers that you don't have to get to the point where you need to defend high ground from this team because well, it's going to be very difficult. It does seem the MMKR are fans of the Radiance Rush on their safe laners as well. I'm just going to point that out. Um, they did go for the Radiance Rush on Lifestealer last game. So, potentially going to have a little more wave clear up on the high ground with that. But, yeah, definitely it's going to be difficult to 
fight at their own high ground with the lineup they have here. I, I mean, the Radiance would help a little bit, but my thought process is that Blood Rite and Power Shot is enough to kill the Creep Wave, but you, like at that point, it's about the heroes. And in your, if you're in Radiance range, you're also in Quill range, and eventually, like, it's not going to take that long for you to start losing that trade. Mm. Especially with Necro Heal, Bristlebacks, Tankiness, whatever other aura items they have, you know. Um, do you think maybe I mean, their goal is just there's other, be... there's other nice things about the high ground defense. Oracle can potentially go up to someone like Bristle and disarm him so that mm -hmm. that extra damage he's getting from his ultimate oh, passive okay. stacks isn't really mattering for a few seconds. But you know, Five it's there's a lot of there's a lot of nuances that go both ways at this. Yeah. It's kind of just the thing that we'll have to see it playing out once it actually does. Do you think maybe their plan here is just to get Wraith King <clears throat> into the fight with a Radiance or with a Mjolnir on him or something, let him die, and then Bloodseeker comes in and cleans up because everybody's low. I mean, I don't think your strategy with Wraith King should ever be to hope that he dies. Um, you like If you're playing against people like uh, Quap, Necrophos to some extent, um, other heroes that are extremely bursty like Lena, Wraith King is very nice for that because you don't really have to worry about your position one being initiated on and then you know mm -hmm. you start the fight with four people and with oracle it's also possible that if they go on somebody else he can just uh ult them so you sort of are trying to cover your bases as many ways as possible so mm -hmm. that no matter who gets gone on you can sort of deal with it and then turn the fight around um i don't think i think wraith king's strategy hmm. no. he could go for the, what's the... oh so this is a support Wraith King, then? It might. I don't think it is a support Wraith King. I mean, is it could PL be, but I think... Is mid and Bloodseeker's an offlane, or how... I think one of them is an offlane. I mean, I'm not... Like, I'm just assuming that that's what they're running. I'm not mm. necessarily recommending it, but... I don't... I don't know what support Wraith King would do in this game. I don't think support Wraith King is good at all. Um... <laughs> I think it would work more in their favor to <coughs> do like dual lane, safe lane, off lane with Bloodseeker, PL, Wraith King as the cores. Mm -hmm. okay. but we'll see. So one thing I want to point out here, Baroshka core on Sniper was Warlock last game. So either they're changing up their roles. Actually, it does look like they are. Yeah, Yuki Noguchi was their safe lane. Johnny Magic still going to be in the off lane, it looks like. Uh, Baroshka core trading off and playing on that s mid sniper no they're always playing mid so on the safe lane sniper <clears throat> so my general impression right now is mmkr have the easier draft to execute in the early game i'm not even sure that that's true. I mean, I don't think the early game is going to be hugely disparaging for either team. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely favor H Dick's draft more because what I'm thinking about is how well each team high ground sieges. Mm -hmm. So I don't feel like I like team fights are obviously relevant, but I'm just looking at because I feel like both of these drafts to me it just feel like they're from the perspective of high ground sieging and high ground defense, mm -hmm. vice versa. So in H Dick's case. I feel like their draft is pretty pretty annoying to play against when you're trying to defend high ground because we got bristle front lining sniper hitting from the back necro healing everybody up pudge looking for hooks to potentially start a good fight for them and then your high ground defense like the thing is in that situation um mmkr have to be the ones that are like trying to initiate and their initiation so far is like without items is really bad. So I think Blink Dagger and Wraith King, no matter what else he builds, is absolutely required this game. And I think his strategy pretty much always has to be to try and blink in, burst some support, get some big crits, and then from that point on, you know. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. All right. So this is gonna be a four-position Bloodseeker, um, an off-lane Wraith King behind uh, or with uh, Oracle behind him, <clears throat> and a mid Windrunner. Uh, looks like the lanes are shaking out pretty typically for uh, for H-Dick. So what do you think of MMKR's lanes here? 
Um, I have to reconnect because the observer menu is not showing up for me, so I cannot actually look around for myself. All right. And then once I do get back, I will be happy to answer that question. All right. So uh, we're going to go ahead and... Oh, and it's not back. That's fantastic. So I think I'm stuck on the directed camera. It's not giving me the drop-down menu in the top right. That's lovely. Um, I do not know how to go about fixing that, unfortunately. Good restart the client. I think I'll just have to come back. Yeah, go for that. Uh, so <clears throat> there's going to be an attempt at a steal here. And actually, Root Suit able to pick up that uh, bounty rune right from under h Dix Heroes. Uh, going to go, looks like, two for two. However, even so. Yeah, two for two even so on the bounty rune. So not the team getting advantage right there. But we're going to go ahead and see... Daddy Brian on the Oracle actually is going ahead and TPing up to the top lane so that they can trade out entirely. The Blood Seekers will be going against the Sniper and the Oracles will be going against the Bristleback plus Jakiro combination. Um, probably for the Purge. Uh, having that available against the Jakiro's uh, uh, damage over time spells. And both lanes so far are actually a lot more active than last game. Looks like we're going to have a Wraith Fire Blast out onto Yuji Noguchi right away. He's taking quite a bit of damage. Richard getting right-clicked to death by Barash Kukor for the time being, but he has that thirst and is able to just run at him anyway. Pops Uh Yuji yep, can... What'd you say? So now that we are on the game, I am back, fortunately. Um, it is a support Wraith King. Uh, uh, no, it's a support Bloodseeker. Support Blood... I, I'm, I'm done talking about the bottom. We're going to look at another lane. Okay, so <laughs> top lane. You have PL and Oracle versus Bristol Jakiro. I think this lane is really, really not favored for Kitty Rangers. PL versus Bristol is a miserable experience unless mm -hmm. you have a trial lane and you can really punish them for it. And this lane cannot punish at all. I think it's very difficult for either one of them to really do much. This Oracle is almost a non-factor. But he also can't really leave because then PL just gets incredibly bullied for absolutely nothing. So, yeah. Kitty Rangers, I don't think it's very happy about the situation. And I'm just hoping that uh, H-Dick is well, aware they... of the matchup and are aggressive enough once they get their levels. They actually started with Bloodseeker up here in top instead of Oracle, but rotated immediately upon seeing the Bristleback. I mean, like, we talked about the second pick Bristle and what you want to do to deal with that, and I feel like none of their picks deal with that like the oracle kind of deals with it later on in the game in the laning stage it's really not that relevant at all but their core picks like it doesn't matter who they put top it would not be a great time mm -hmm. like maybe like a carry blood seeker would be the best or a wind ranger just because you can blood rage and get some health back yeah you know? trade the wind runner with the uh with the pl perhaps let pl go uh, definitely i was expecting pl to be mid for sure and this Wind Ranger to be position four, position three, or something, and dual off lane to somebody else. I feel like there's better ways to utilize this draft than it is being utilized. Well, three minutes in, no first blood yet. Very similar to last game, where we had first blood at like 11 minutes. Obelisk actually taking quite a bit of damage here, has some dots on, but they do get purged off by Daddy Brian. Johnny Magic Clover coming in with the spines, has three sets. Uh, it's not going to be enough to chase down Mr. Obelisk, who is flying out a salve. Uh, no, he's not flying out a salve. He's just going to be all right as he is. Yeah, this lane top is only going to get harder for them without mm -hmm. rotations, even with rotations. I mean, like, they have to get rotations. Actually, Gong Farmer might course. go down here. They're able to take him out. Between yeah, the Fortune's important. End and the Purifying Flames, just got to level 3. And uh, level two spirit uh, spear that is sufficient to get that first blood. It's really, it's really um, imperative that Jakiro is a little bit more mindful in this lane because that's pretty much one of the only ways that the lane starts going out of their favor again. Granted, the bristle is the real issue, and you're not dealing with bristle even so. But the fact is, they, as Kitty Rangers, you should not be getting any kills from that lane, so Jakira just needs to be a little more careful next time. But I think he'll be okay in doing that. Sniper's getting gone on bottom as well. Yeah, he's gonna get chased down by Rootsitute here, who does have that thirst. However, he's gonna get hooked back, and that'll be a death. Very good hook coming out of Mr. Gucci, but he's gonna get uh, Wraith Fire Blasted. Mr. Zycor doing a bit of damage to him there, and takes him out. 
But our Ashka Corps is going to try to chase down Mr. Zycor, but it's not going to be uh, fast enough on that sniper. He has to back up because he is getting the thirst on him at the time, at the moment. Taking a lot of damage to these skeletons. It's good rotation by Oracle to get that DD in the middle and actually end up killing Necro as well. And this uh, XP discrepancy middle is huge. When Ranger is level 6, while Necro is 4. Insane. Yeah, 14 to 9 to 3. Uh, that'll do it. <clears throat> as well as uh, Zoroy pushing out all the lanes with his Death Pulse. The other thing is, when Ranger doesn't even need to be that concerned about being this low health because he knows he has a huge. He has a, like a whole one level padding from six so it's not like necker is surprise gonna get scythe and then oops i lost my lane advantage he's got he's still got like a wave or two he's mm -hmm. fine even saying that he's got cell so it doesn't even care anymore yeah rash kakor having to make the walk of shame back because of that tp that was forced missing out on a lot of xp and farm but giving some that up to uh no gucci who's making good use of it has his boots ready tranquils in fact are complete <clears throat> Once he chooses to buy them, Obelisco taking a lot of damage here from uh, just general harassment. Went for a soul ring, interestingly enough. Um, thoughts on the soul ring? I think soul ring is a mid PL item. I think, generally speaking, I don't think the build has been maxing. I mean, in this lane, you probably have to max Spirit Lance, but generally speaking, a lot of people still would like to max Phantom Rush and those sorts of things first and then get Lance, mm -hmm. which the Soul Ring is obviously a little bit less relevant for. Um, but I don't think this is a circumstance in which you would like Soul Ring very much. Because when, when are you going to want to use the active of Soul Ring in this lane? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are going to see some action bottom. Actually, uh, you know, Noguchi taking quite a bit of damage here to the Blood Rite and it's going down after trying to initiate. Uh, so says Oracle, so it is. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, the Soul Ring, that, that was my thought too, like, when do you actually want to use the Soul Ring? It, it... In this lane, you never want to use it, so I, yeah. I just don't think it's correct for this position feel in this game. Yeah, it, I would per, uh, prefer, I think, to see just a, a naked Ring of Health, honestly. Yeah, honestly. Honestly, like, it could have just stayed naked Ring of Health. He could have even potentially built it into Vanguard. Not entirely irrelevant, because that's a lot of damage gone from Sniper. Mm -hmm. Obviously, most of the damage is still magic, but, you know, tankiness is tankiness. Yeah, and... speaking of, Bristleback actually has his own Ring of Health, and has had it for two minutes now. And Finally, we are seeing rotation top. It looks like they are going to go for something. Yeah, Gong Farmer taking a bit of damage here, going to get rooted in place, and that's going to be the Blood right onto him as well. Rooted 2 chasing him down. Couple right clicks from Daddy Brian. Gong Farmer actually is actually going to end up dying. Obelisk using that Soul Ring to get the Spirit Lance. Very risky. It was down to the point where maybe one spine would kill him before he wanded up and TP's back home. I think I might have liked to see him stay and then just get some Blood Rages as he was about to kill the small creeps at the jungle camp. Then again, yeah. he's using the shrine, so. Assuming that he is using the shrine, this is better. But assuming he had to go to the base, yeah, yeah we like some blood rage. But yeah, they did the correct thing using the shrine like that. So that also means Rooster 2 gets a little bit of farm in lane. Um, <clears throat> the nice thing is that they still have three heroes top, so they can just try and go again. Yeah, they're going right into Gong Farmer. The root was not available at that point, so they are not going to be able to get a kill, but they are going to be able to force uh, at least an extra rotation up here with no Gucci coming. So Obviously, it still, come, hmm? still comes down to the execution, but I think three versus three scenario definitely favors H deck here with their heroes, especially with something like Hook. That just if you can land it, that just kind of wins the. Yeah, but I do I do think it is better than the two v two scenario for MMKR. I'm not totally sure. I think it just depends on the way things pan out in the moment. But I think if they're all, I mean, I don't know. It's kind of hard to say. Oh, there's the hook. Not quite going to make it in, but now their obelisk is going to rush in onto Noguchi. Able to back off with that doppelganger to avoid uh, avoid the death pulse. So now four heroes top. Well, Getting this rotation from Necro is actually really nice, I think. I think PL and Oracle should just leave, maybe. Or actually, if they get vision of Necro and they know he left, then it's fine for them to say it's correct. But Yeah, they... Uh, they... Have a ward here and a ward here. They watched him leave the whole way. And I honestly wasn't here. sure if H Dick were gonna try and turn that into a shoddy push or not, because they already had four people. 
I think it's correct for them to all just leave because it would have been so slow and given Windranger more space than she deserves. But oh, I missed uh, <laughs> missed a dive here on the sniper. Is Icor taking out Barashka Core? But he might turn around for that. Hasn't leveled his ult and doesn't have a skill point to level it with either. Gom Farmer not. Uh, he's getting blocked up by the creeps, so I don't think he's gonna be able to get that last uh, last dual breath out. And Zycor is able to go away scot free with that. I'm not sure how close they were to getting the kill. I'm not sure if it was the the difference between life and death for Sniper, but I think I I would I would maybe like to see Wraith King have hold have held a sixth skill point for ults. So what a lot of Wraith Kings do is they just once they have level six and onwards, they just always have a skill point ready for six. Mm -hmm. And if ever they get ganked, I think to myself, if I have my ults here, do I walk out away? Do I live to my team turn the team fight? And if the answer is no, they don't skill their ults. Mm -hmm. And the, if the answer is yes, then they do skill their ult in that moment, and then they can turn it. So it's sort of like, if you have that opportunity, you can sort of make that call and turn your ult into a suit of active at level one. Yeah. You're sort of asking yourself if like, the second life will change things, and if the answer is yes, then you just skill it. Yeah, and then you have the threat of the ultimate the whole time without having to burn it if it's... If it's yeah, because uh, you never want to you never want to skill you never want to skill at level one, and then be in a situation where you're like, okay, I'm using my 200 second cooldown and I'm still gonna die anyway. Mm -hmm. So a rotation here from Imguchi or Noguchi into the jungle to try to pull out Rutitu, but <clears throat> he sees him right up. Just gonna walk at him. However, he is gonna get assassinated, so he's gonna back off right away. Says I don't want any part of this at this point. Zycor's already healed back up uh, through that vampiric aura. And mid lane actually is a, a mild recovery for uh, Zroe in this. He's almost level 9 at the same time that MMPR is almost level 10. Um, so, able to bring it back a little bit. A rotation now in top lane. Rutitude using that rupture onto Johnny Magic. We TP's away immediately. Obelisk and Rutitude are going to be frozen by the ice patch, not able to finish off for about 40 TP. Rutitude, meanwhile, is being walked down by Noguchi, who does get that meat hook off and kills Rutitude in exchange for that overextension. Oracle just got the ult from the creeps there. He didn't quite have it when Bloodseeker dies. Mm -hmm. However, he did have Fade's Edict, which would have helped stifle the damage from Rot and level up of Jakira's abilities mm -hmm. going on. I don't know if it would have been the difference between Bloodseeker living and dying. Uh, it doesn't block but I think it, damage, I think it was so worth a shot. I mean, I think I'm pretty sure he could. He could definitely face edict. I'm pretty sure he could also purifying flames. I think that combination would have mm. potentially made things a lot closer. I think it was at very least worth doing. Yeah. But nevertheless, Blood Secret does die. Invis picked up by Zoe. <clears throat> Looks like he's gonna head into the jungle, try to pick off a Blood Seeker as he's coming through. Or head towards top. Not really sure which direction. All right, now he's heading back towards mid. I think he was looking for Wind Ranger because he didn't have vision. Yeah. But now so that he, he has the ultimate, he wants to go Wind Runner. Uh, does walk into tower oh. range and he gets spotted out, so that's not going to be successful on his part. That's unfortunate. However, all this movement means that Barashka Core is sort of free in lane. He's had a very difficult lane. Just barely has finished treads, but he's going to have his mask finished as well very shortly with that little bit of uh, free farm he's been given. Yeah, this space is huge for a hero like Sniper. And as MMKR, you want to be aware of this and definitely try and do something about it soon. And it looks like they're actually setting up to do that somewhat with this Oracle. But I think they could also use a little bit more help. I'd like to see a rotation from Wind Major, honestly. I think of all the heroes that have stayed in lane, he's probably the one, mm -hmm. one of the ones that should. Well, the rotation really... was like 100% spotted out by this ward over here. So, Barashka Core is sitting. Uh, this one. Oh yeah, yeah. So Barashikor is just sitting like nine miles back. Says, "I am not gonna die here. I've finally got a little bit of space, and I'm gonna what? be happy about it." But he does get a little complacent here. <clears throat> However, he well, does have, he a does have the punch rotation, so he does feel a lot so more comfortable. So there's the fire blast followed by the root, but I don't think it's gonna. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. I don't think I don't think this pause is gonna <laughs> like change anything. I don't think it changes anything either. And, like there's yeah, no wraith fire blast again for nine seconds. Wait. Nine seconds? Did they change? Oh, it's not eight seconds at all levels anymore. Huh. God, but these two-week patches have made it so hard to keep up. But, uh, <clears throat> yeah, Sniper gets out here, like, 100%, right? In theory. Even without Pudge here to hook him? Yes. Uh, the only way he dies is if some unforeseen player error occurs, <laughs> and... <laughs> 
but yeah, I think he's fine without a third hero to worry about. Yeah. They've already used the stun. And the root. It's already been rooted. He's fine. And the root's only going to last fine. for like one and a half seconds. There's not enough creeps to dive under tower with that, especially with the threat of the Yeah, they're not diving under tower so... anyway. They're already not positioned to make Do they such see the push? No, they don't, but even they even do. if they, they thought do. he was alive. Oh yeah, they do, you're right. I unbound the thing again. Ba -da -ba 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 -ba. I really like to see this Windrager rotate now that he has ult and javelin. I think uh, they can take bottom very easily with Windranger plus two other heroes. Yeah. Kind of doesn't matter which two they are. As long as they're like in a lane other than Bristleback, I think I think his objective just has to be like gank heroes and put pressure on lanes that Bristleback is not in. If Bristleback comes there, that's fine. You just TP somewhere else. Your team does something somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And you just play this game around the Bristleback, always doing the exact opposite thing that he's doing faster than he can. Because Bristle wants to react to you or be proactive so that you have to react to him. But if you dictate the game so that he's kind of almost a non-factor, that's incredibly uh, useful for MMKR. All right, so... Uh, just gonna burn a couple uh, shrapnels there, make sure that they don't actually dive onto him there. Sniper um, got out, the absolute god. Wait, why? There we go. <clears throat> uh, Barash Kakor. Hanging on to that gold, looks like he probably wants to pick up the Morbid Mask, because he has the money for it very shortly. Uh, meanwhile, on top lane, gonna be a little bit of, you know, a little bit of harass, really, onto Johnny Magic, not really a whole movement. Um, <clears throat> you said about Windrunner. At the same time, it's really hard to give up a lane of free farm. Like, I mean, you, when you when the uh, when the mid rotates, you just have somebody else leech XP there. That's just that's mm -hmm. just par for the course. You have someone like Bloodseeker or Oracle. Like, you always just do something like that. Oh. Which goes for the hook middle. Very optimistic. Yeah. <clears throat> but uh, saltwater tappy gonna. Be <clears throat> move back. He is only a thousand gold away from his maelstrom, which is a really big item for him as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Johnny Magic, just, you know, getting harassed. Not really a whole lot of action happening top. However, there are three heroes up in top for MMKR at this point, so they really do want to try to make something happen. I just, I don't see how they do it against this Bristleback right now. Unless Gong Farm yeah. is out of position. This top lane <laughs> is... The hardest thing to do anything about so the strategy is just to do things elsewhere mm -hmm. i think without a wind ranger rotation you just don't worry about top even with it i think it's it takes a lot of effort and rotation and they just need to treat this lane as like the awkward red-headed stepchild and just worry about <laughs> the other stuff you know so and i think this hmm? sorry you go i was gonna say barash <clears throat> dodging the gank there with the vision that he's had for a few minutes about to expire but just going to sit back in the jungle now at this point. What do you think he's going for? He has 1,800 gold. <clears throat> has not purchased anything yet. Doesn't even have anything I'm to do I'm hoping that. it's Mask. Um, I guess it could be Maelstrom. But I would hope that it was Mask, personally. Oracle getting ulted he here by the Pudge in top lane. Noguchi not able to ult him forever, though. So he does get the False Promise off. Is not going to die from it for the time being. Is able to actually turn around onto the Jakiro. He heals up all the way almost to full. Meanwhile, the, mid the Windranger did rotate into this lane. Johnny Magic taking quite a bit of damage. Is able to stick up quite a bit of it. And he's not going to quite connect on that Shackle. So this is probably going to be the end of this movement. And however, Z -Rob, or, uh, Zero comes in and is attempting to get that ult off onto Windrunner. But the Fate Seed prevents that. Uh, meanwhile, in bottom lane, Roostu with the double damage is chasing down everybody. Has gotten two kills so far. Does get turned around bomb, turned around on by Zero and Barashikor, who has rotated up. And it looks like he's going for the uh, Dragon Lance, by the way. Bloodsucker died pretty far out there, but if you watch the entire like sequence of his impact on that whole yeah, situation, Bristle died because of him. Pudge denied, but still died because of him. Ah. He got a rotation on a sniper, I believe. You know, And they still got... They still got other kills. They got Shakira. Oracle's play there was pretty pretty solid. Baited three people into tower. Got one ranger to rotate. Get a kill on Shakira. They also get Bristle. And prevent the kill on Windrunner with the Fate Edict. Yeah, Oracle in situations like this is incredibly useful, especially against Necro. Oracle versus Necro is just such a fantastic matchup, honestly. Yeah, you're so sad about that as as a Necro player. 
But uh, <clears throat> Necro does have his Veil of Discord finished up, working on that Blink Dagger as well, which he will have very shortly. Uh, once there's two but, items... Hmm? I'm not sure how I feel about Veil on Necro in this game. I think I would have liked to see him go more aura-focused items, really commit to like the slow, methodical siege kind of tankiness, where your whole team is just impossible to kill. I don't know how I feel about Veil in this game. Mm, the Veil does give you yourself quite a bit of extra sustain um, in that HP regen and armor, and the Int gives you a lot more mana pool to manage that sustain with as well. Because it's like, what, 15 Int? 14 Int? 14, but it is a lot. Uh, so there's going to be a Shackle onto mid, followed by the Windrunner ult. Not gonna really going to matter because he's going to Death Shroud and Death Pulse and walk away. Windrunner is trying to chase him down. Running into the tower, still has face boots. And Zero, meanwhile, is going to try to get the kill off, but Windrunner oh, walks up on the high ground, ground and kills him. Meanwhile, Sniper's dying in the bottom. Looks like he was walked down by uh, Daddy Magic, or Johnny Magic, and, uh, and Roots Ritu. It's really unfortunate for Necro that both of his supports did not have TPs available for that. There's a little bit, well, they were fighting. Just a little bit misplayed as well, but it certainly would have helped to have somebody. Yeah. <clears throat> they were fighting in bottom at the same time, though. Like who do you I thought? Like, yeah, they were bottom. One. They were busy. Yeah, I thought. I thought for sure he'd get out of there and just be upset that you know I'm this low health. I got to regen a little bit with Q, but he actually did die there. Um, so Zycor is going to go for the radiance. It looks like has the relic already finished. Uh, movement here in onto Jakiro is going to get picked up. Uh, not a huge kill for MMKR, but helps them sort of establish that lead. Even with, you know, 12 to 3, it's only a 2k gold lead for MMKR, but I do feel like with these, with at least one of these two towers going down here shortly, it's going to uh, start snowballing for them. Yeah, definitely. And now the way that the game was feeling like all of the gamers were rotating around giving space to Sniper, and Sniper was getting whatever he wanted, now it's actually rotated into the opposite way, and that PL is feeling that himself. Hmm. Top on the CS with 93. 19 minutes, you'd hope for a little bit more, but, you know, net worth is relative, and being top of net worth is always something to be happy about, so. Yeah, Bristleback going down there to a four-man rotation as well, and it looks like they might be able to grab Jakir on the other side if he's too greedy. Goes for that ward play, but he's going to get rooted out, <clears throat> followed by the power shot, taking quite a bit of damage to that. The ice path is sufficient to give him a little bit of room. Does get caught by the blood right, but it's not going to be enough to make anyone feel comfortable about following up on that, so. A little bit of a skirmish. That word's probably going to get dewarded very quickly. The thing is, like, MMKR's draft is much better about, um, like, dealing with a game that's falling out of your control and mm -hmm. trying to make plays that put it back into your control, you know, like ganking this here, pushing that lane, etc., etc. Whereas, one of the only plays that H Dick can really make is, like, hey, I want to push this with you guys. Can we push this or something? Mm -hmm. It's like they don't have anybody that pushes quickly on their own. They don't have anybody who ganks particularly well. Um, Necro is the closest thing with his builds. And he can definitely kill Windranger here if he just goes for it, but... Well, Windranger's actually gonna get the hook shot, not the hook shot, the uh, shackle shot off. And as the blink forward as well as the veil going on to Windranger, that's gonna be a kill. Gonna turn around with the blood rank, but it's not gonna be enough to really make a movement happen, so... Just a free kill on the winner under there. Assuming that the game had been going in H Dick's favor, I definitely would have preferred to see the tanky aura build on Necro, but I think in this situation where they're behind, this build actually does serve them much better. Dire structures are <clears throat> yep, Dire Fort coming out here, and here's that siege you were talking about. Gonna have the Jakiro and uh, Necro set up here with Pudge sitting in the back lines. And go ahead and grab that tower up. But that does mean. You know, Obelisk is free to do what he wants to do, and he has that Diffusal on the Courier coming to him right now. Rift King has finished his Radiance, he just has to get it ferried off of the Courier, and then he's ready to go. This Oracle is very dead. Able to get the ult off and do some damage at least. Don't know why he went for the heal there. He should be earning right now. Maybe he lives with the urn. Oh, Actually, shit, he lives he anyway. Live. Damn. Uh, Roots 2 is going to take a lot of damage from Zero, but he's just going to walk away for the time being. There's going to be the ultimate coming out from Jakiro. Not enough to kill anybody, but it is enough to force everyone away. And there's going to be a Sniper Blast onto Mr. Obelisk. Does get caught by the Ice Path. Just barely enough for Barash Shakur to take him out. That was... That's got to be like the... Oh, it is level 2, but still, that's only 485, like... 380 damage, max. 
And that is that is still a really unfortunate death on PL though. He he teleported for that, I believe. Mm -hmm. Didn't even get any kills off of it. Now he's dead for twenty more seconds before he can do anything. Mm -hmm. And his TB is on cooldown, so he'll have to run out of base as well. Mm -hmm. But uh, he'll be coming up around the right time to at least run out into the jungle, so small victories. As long as Lycor doesn't kill all the creeps. <clears throat> Rootitude is working towards the Yules on this position for Bloodseeker. What do you think? I think Yules is almost never a bad item on a support Bloodseeker in this game. What would I want? Maybe... I would want a force staff, I think, versus the enemy heroes. Like, someone gets pudged, and then you force staff them away, try to correct the positioning problem, or you force to staff someone towards your oracle after they get ulted by a necro. I think the Yules is okay, because it's sort of it's it's quite gives you a lot of utility. It gives you mana regen on Bloodseeker. It gives mm -hmm. you some move speed that you can always rely on. You'll always have. It can let you cancel pudge ult immediately without having to wait for Blood Rider if it's on cooldown. Mm -hmm. Dodge sniper assassinate. You can, you know, you will somebody like Bristle or Necro in the fight if you want to focus on other people or just run away. I think Yules is, is pretty acceptable. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> speaking of recoveries, though, Barash Kakor has nearly finished a Mjolnir on top of his Mask and Dragonlance. Uh, Gong Farmer going down here in the bottom lane to a five-man rotation. Was that a smoke, or was it just uh, everyone walking? I think it was just running. Yeah, no wards in the area, so. Um, but... Barashakor is catching up in terms of his farm. Like, he's not caught up by any stretch of the imagination, but if we go ahead and take a look at net worth, like, he's not that far behind either. Yeah. It's not... She's not worlds and universes and galaxies apart from the rest of the players in this game. Uh, missed hook there, and Obelisk is going to take the opportunity to go on. Zyker actually leading with the Wraithfire Blast. Now they're going to go on to Johnny Magic as well, going to get rooted into the Blood Rite. Rooster is actually walking past Bloodseeker to make sure he gets full damage on that Blood Rite. And now they're going to ult the tower with the Windrunner. Even with the backdoor detection, doing a little bit of damage to it. And yeah, they're just... They're going to have to wait. Windrunner is actually TPing back to make sure they don't lose their own Tier 2 in the process. But this Tier 2 should go down uh, for MMKR. Yeah, those are the situations as... You know, punch and bristle back where you're always thinking to yourself, man, if I just TP'd a tower farther away, everything would be okay right now. It's like, it's one of those lessons that every single person who's ever played Dota has to learn and relearn and relearn. That sometimes you just have to teleport a little bit farther away. Yeah. You know? um, but I believe that Yules is not quite finished. Uh, he has the money for it and has finished it now. <clears throat> Um, Daddy Grind is working on an Aether Lens for Oracle, wanting to be able to get that ult off from, you know, nine miles away. Blink Dagger is finished up on Zycor, so really strong initiation there. And Obelisk is working towards what I presume is going to be a Silver Edge. Um, Childish Gambi, or Saltwater Taffy, rather, is finished with his Blink and Maelstrom, working towards a Lincolns. Uh, Lincolns for, I guess, a lot of big ultimates. Not a whole lot of other things to pop Lincolns with, so a strong item in this game for sure. But do you think it's the right next item after the Blink and Maelstrom? This Necro might just die. Yeah, this Necro's dead, I think. Uh, he didn't heal himself under the Ghost Shroud. Probably could have at least turned around and dig in too, but that's the end of the Jakiro as well. And with those two pickoffs, uh, might be a tier 2 middle that the uh, MMKR decide to go for. Um, definitely, it does feel like MKR's banning strategy this game of getting H Dick really far out of their comfort zone is working out for them. Um, but what do you think of the Lincolns here on Windrunner as the next major item? I don't think it's necessary. I really don't. Um, <clears throat> I think in most situations, um, like the nice thing about Lincolns this game is it's pretty much always going to block an important spell. Mm -hmm. Unless, of course, like Bristle is just able to use goo on you or something. The other thing is that Sniper can just break Lincoln with Assassinate potentially, and then you don't have it for a little bit. But I think I would have liked to see that amount of gold to go to a different item like Ags or BKB. Mm -hmm. I imagine... I, I have a hard time seeing BKB having less of an impact than Lincoln's this game. 
Uh, Hook almost catching out on the Windrunner there as they siege this tower down. But all of H6 heroes are alive now. Johnny Magic going in with that Blade Mail and Vanguard. So he's going to actually prevent Zykor from running away as this happens. There's a blink forward by Windrunner going on to Pudge, but it's not going to turn into anything. Zykor does burn his ultimate here. Gets the Wraith Fire Blast onto MMKR's uh, Bristleback. And so far, they get the tower just... Or actually, the deny comes out from zero. Uh, so an objective, but... At what cost? With that, are they not taking fire, rush? Wraith fire. Uh, I'm not taking rush. I thought for sure they were all just running to rush there. I loved that play. Yeah, I thought they were running to rush as well, but I guess they feel too scared to take it with the <clears throat> reincarnate down. They have. I, I I would have liked to see it. They have so much vision of radiant side of the map right now. Mm. Like, sure, they possibly smoke, but I think it's unlikely that they're able to. Ooh, Obviously, in theory, they can smoke without you seeing it, but I don't think it would actually turn out that way. Mm. I think they, like, they definitely can burst Roche. Uh, do they have a medallion on anybody? Well, they can because they have. They the, don't have a medallion. The they have, they have the range. Map, but... Fire Wraith King's crit does huge damage versus Roche. Mm. Yeah, but it looks like this is going to be a clash here. The top tier two Johnny Magic sitting up in front, trying to make a difficult target. And uh, everyone's just getting ready to, you know, fight up here. But it looks like now maybe they're going to go back towards Roshan. Yeah. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. Okay. I feel like Roshan. they're having an ongoing conversation right now about what they are doing. Um, but what they are not doing is pushing top, and I agree with that. Uh, attempt there, it looks like uh, Zykor is able to blink away before Zero gets any spells off on him. Looks like he led with the Reaper Scythe as his attempt instead of the Dagon. So missed out on the instant damage oppor opportunity. Um. <clears throat> Man, Reef King's... Yeah, they are going to go into the Roche Pit now. So, Childish Gambino taking him down. Uh, well, this happens. I just want to say, Wraith King's sword sounds like he's hitting you with a brick. Yeah, it does. Fight happens. All right, so now we're going to see Noguchi getting ready for the hook. The hook goes in, but it is just going to hit a little skeleton creep. Wraith King is running towards them. Going to get ulted there, but it doesn't matter. He still has reincarnate. There's going to be the shackle shot to cancel. Like Horse said, I'm okay with dying right now. Kill me, please. Meanwhile, it looks like uh, Saltwater Tapping going to take a lot of damage here from Zero's ult after the blink forward. And the Rupture is going to go here onto Johnny Magic, but he's going to turn around and say, you know, come at me, bro. Like, I have a Sniper behind me, I have a uh, Necro behind me, and you cannot kill me right now. And he's right. That fight goes, that fight goes a lot of different ways, depending on how everybody plays it. Which is sort of something that doesn't need to be said, but it's very possible that that fight around Roche, we see it again, and in multiple scenarios, everybody on H deck dies. Then a uh, monkey, kitty rage, sorry, kitty rages. <laughs> Take Roche, <laughs> you know, get racks. There's a lot of ways that that could have turned out, and it was definitely about execution and positioning more than mm -hmm. anything. I feel. Um, so I do want to point out that there is a hood finished on Roostitute as well as a pipe coming out. Um, everyone is still scouting a Roche pit. Like, both teams <clears throat> could take the Roche right now, I think. If they can get a good... Oh, they get the hook here onto... I mean, not really the best target, but there is no Reincarnate, actually. So, like, we're just... He's a great die. target. Yeah, he's dead. Yeah, I, really... I didn't realize he didn't have Reincarnate again. But without Reincarnate, that means... going down for Roche, though. <clears throat> I just did not realize it. Yeah, he only went solo they do, have, they do have a word, so I think they do know, actually. Well, Zero's gonna walk into the pit and say, oh no, but uh, Obelisk does have his Shadow Blade. Zero is ruptured, gonna have to walk away and just dies. There's gonna be the ult by Noguchi out as well as the hook follow up on 222, and that is enough to kill him off. The fire sitting on the macro fire sitting on the ground is huge for H tick and they're able to get two more kills out of that with the ice path holding in place and Johnny Magic using that blade mail to great effect there. So as now this Roshan goes the way of H tick As always, hindsight is twenty twenty. But it is definitely worth mentioning that these last five or so minutes would be completely different if as soon as they left um
like middle and top is five, and they were all like running up to the Roche pit. Mm -hmm. If they just <clears> took Roche there, the next like they would continue to be dictating this game with Aegis, without a fight at Roche Pit. Yeah. They had a lot of vision at the time. I think even if a smoke came out, they could have definitely deal dealt with it. They got Blood Rite, they got Power Shot, Peel can drain everybody's mana. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, I think it's a really big deal that they did not take Roche when they had the opportunity to do so easily. Yeah, now Barash Kukor has 3,000 gold he can spend at his leisure. The thing about most sniper games, I feel, is that as soon as Sniper is, has like sufficiently become a problem with you in team fights, it's almost always too late. Mm -hmm. Almost. Because by then, like everybody else on their team has ways of dealing with you, making sure that you can't initiate on Sniper for free, get in that backline. Your plan pretty much has to be like get Wraith King or PL on him, and then just burst him down. Potentially Wind Ranger as well, she can also do that, fortunately. But you kinda you can't let this sniper just do sniper things for free. The problem mm -hmm. is now that he has Aegis. You can't just initiate on him and then win the team fight as a result yeah. just off of that. So they're in a very sticky situation right now. <laughs> it's difficult to um, get past the bristleback anyway, and he's going for a radiance, so blinking past him is gonna be a lot more difficult as well. Yeah, you gotta the the in that scenario where like sniper doesn't have Aegis and you can actually do something off of that sort of initiation, the hope is just that you're smoked, you're coming from an odd angle, and that's how you do it. You can certainly you're not gonna have a whole lot of luck going for it like in a high ground scenario where they already have vision of you and that's in that sense bristles never gonna let you get past they actually are able to get mr obelisk here he's double ganging for the time being but he still is probably gonna die no he gets the false promise out before taking a lot of damage but he is disarmed still has the golden heaven so he's gonna end up dying at the end of this if he doesn't get any more noguchi does go down to macro pyre plus a right click from wraith king wraith king running away here at the time being does have the reincarnate barashka core is hitting on him but the Wraith Fire Blast means that Wraith King is going to be able to catch up to him, maybe. Yes, slow down by the Bristle Pack, isn't able to blink away because of the constant right clicks from Barash and Core, but now there's a second Wraith Fire Blast, and that's the Aegis. Meanwhile, on the other side, Johnny Magic is using the Blade Mail to kill off everybody that uh, runs after him, and Windrunner is not able to finish him off because of that, but Root Suit is following him down. Sniper, meanwhile, is able to kill off Zycor one time, but then with the Echo Saber, uh, Zycor, as well as a final Moral Strike, is able to get that kill onto the Sniper and on the other side. Uh, Bristleback does end up going down once his blade nail dies to Saltwater Taffy and Roots 2. Sniper Wraith King there trade Aegis for Reincarnation, but it still goes the way of Wraith King for sure. Yeah. <clears throat> and actually, it wasn't even trade Aegis. Like, they do trade their Aegis for Reincarnation, but the Aegis died a lot, like a long time before the Reincarnate even happened. Sniper was down to half HP again by the time he got the Reincarnate and didn't have. The f yeah. Um, if the fights are as scrappy as they have been, especially that one, I think that definitely favors Kitty Rangers a lot more. The mm. draft, they yeah, more... Aesthetic want to be in one place for sure. Yeah, it's it's much harder for them to sort of deal with that. The mobility is worse. They have less damage split evenly among them. Their burst, generally speaking, is not very good. They just have people that want to be in the fight together. You know, like Bristle, Necrophos, and they work cohesively as a team. Mm -hmm. But in pairs of two or three, it's not as Impressive. Yeah. Um, I do want to point out that the Yule Scepter is finished here for Gong Farmer. <clears throat> able to get that uh, Yule's Macro Pyre Ice Path combo off on anybody who doesn't have a BKB, which is everybody at this point. She's got a lot of money. For Jakiro? Yes. Yeah. That's a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. He's up to five this game, though. Um, Yuki is playing a five and is working towards his blade mail. Um, Additionally, I saw another item out during that fight. Um, ba, 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 ba. The Lincolns is finished. That's not the one that I saw, though. Um, oh, it was the Echo Saber on Wraith King. He has finished that up and is working towards an Assault Kuros as well. So Zykor actually is the top farmed hero in the game right now, even though he started off as the off lane. He's got 5,000 gold on, or 4,000 gold on anybody else. Doesn't surprise me a huge amount that Wraith King is the top the net worth hero. Yeah, I think the, so just like he got radiance at the time that he did. Yeah, the Mortal Strike um, skeletons, I feel like, give you a lot in that regard as well, because they're pretty strong, and they can clear out a jungle on their own while you go somewhere else. Yeah. The Sega Saber is, like, Wraith King is one of the few heroes that does not feel bad about getting Echo Saber third or fourth item, just because the burst potential is hugely relevant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you get two Mortal Strikes on that, that's like a thousand damage on the enemy cores. Like, that's huge. And that actually, uh, he got one off to finish off Barashka Core at the end in that previous fight. 
for 520 damage or something like that. So there is a smoke here coming out for MMKR, and this actually is exactly what happened last game to finish off the game. MMKR got a smoke, popped it already here on the high ground, and they took a decisive fight and ended up winning the game off of it. So they try to repeat that experience here. They're able to get the Pudge, but Pudge actually tanks that gank entirely, and there's not a whole lot of follow-up that can be done just yet. Zykor sitting on the front lines since he does have that reincarnate. And it looks like MMKR are going to try for this siege with a minus one, <coughs> but I don't know how well it's going to go for them. Um, yeah, with the Pudge down, it doesn't feel like, even with the Pudge down, H to care about their high ground, like, like, it their high feels ground like defense wall is very Pudge is very important pudge. to their high ground defense, even without Pudge, it, yeah, is very difficult to break. I feel exactly. like... You have to kill three heroes almost on H Dick's side to get up their high grounds, right? You have to get rid of yeah. the Pudge yeah. and the Bristleback and the Sniper in order to take high grounds. Yeah, for sure. It's very, very difficult for them to deal with this predicament they have. They just have. It's like <laughs> one of those games where they are not in a position where they can pretty much Holy ever. Holy shit. Siege. Uh, Long Farmer just picked up a whole Yules, or whole Atos, rather. I don't know where he got it's the money for that. Was it on the courier the whole time or something? He had, he had 3,000 gold. Okay. Remember? He has an ATOS. Yes, he does. All it's not a bad item at all. Yeah, it's not, not at all. I just didn't I was, realize he had the gold with him for it. Considering he was saving up that much money, it was unlikely he'd go for it at that point. I was hoping a little bit that maybe he'd get two mid-range items, like hex. Aeon Disc, Glimmer Cape or something. Like, Hex is not a mid-range item. You're always happy with Hex. But I would love to see... Um, some of their teammates having glimmer capes, Aeon discs, etc. So like yeah. someone like Sniper, worst case scenario, he does get initiated on. At least you can hopefully like glimmer cape him, or like just glimmer is hugely relevant. Aeon disc is hugely relevant. You don't oh, want to yeah, get bursted no by Rift King. On their or... side, is there? Yeah, I really there were like, like three see... glimmers in the last game, but I don't think there's any in this game. With like three or four more defensive items on their heroes, I would feel a lot better with their you know, the way that team fights mm -hmm. could potentially play out for them. So, Mr. Obelisk has not really... Oh, okay, I see what happened. He went back for the Manta style. I was going to say he hasn't really gotten anything. No, he got the Manta. Because um, last I looked, I think he just had the Yasha. Uh, but he is now finally going back for that Silver Edge to deal with the Bristleback. I guess it felt like the Bristleback hasn't really been super important. He has not been as important as he would like to be, mm -hmm. for sure. At the same time, though, you could argue that, well, it's not a great argument, actually. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'd say this Bristol has not been as big of an impact as they would like to be. And that's mostly just because they haven't been in a situation where they can, they've really been able to confidently mm -hmm. group as five and push stuff. So uh, Assault Kuras just got delivered for Wraith King, and the Aghanims also has finished up now on zero. Uh, both teams getting some crucial items here. And neither one really wants to fight, it feels like. Like, MMKR are grouping up here in bottom, but I don't feel like they're grouping up for a fight. They're grouping up to send illusions at the tower. I think that they want to fight, they just don't want to siege. Mm. Whereas Age Stick want to defend high ground and they do not want to fight. Mm. Yeah, right like... now, if I was um, Kitty Rangers, I would want to keep up my vision on their side of the map, make sure I'm informed at a certain point next time. I mean, you, you have recently gotten relevant items on heroes like Wraith King, right, with the AC. Mm -hmm. So as long as you have the vision, you know what you're doing, you know where you're going, I would love to see a smoke come out for them. Yeah, they the... go for picks, they set up for high ground that way. I think that's about to happen because the pipe just got finished as well and there's a Oracle sitting with smoke on the high ground over here. So, yep, we're going to see a smoke coming out from MKR over on this side, it looks like. All five heroes getting in on this action. <clears throat> Got to be able to walk right through the enemy ward. And all the lanes are pushed out, so this isn't uh, isn't very obvious. Although they're heading a bit of a I'm strange they direction. I'm get a kill before Rush first, and it looks like that's their decision as well. So now that everyone off the map, it looks like H Dick have decided they are expecting the smoke to come out. They're standing on high ground, ready to pop it. Oh, they thought it was the Roche Pit. Now everyone's in the middle right here. An immediate kill almost. They're not quite going to kill off Gong Farmer, it looks like. He's going to be able to Yules up himself. 
Sniper on the back side, tearing through everybody. There's the Blade Mail coming out. The ATOS of the Zycor is going to hold him in place while Sniper tries to get away, and he's going to be able to get away just fine. Bloodstick, meanwhile, is ulted by both the Oracle and the Necrophos, but he does end up dying in the long run. Meanwhile, Sniper is chased down by Zycor on the far side of the fight. Uh, Noguchi is able to get that Shrine off, but now he's stuck in place next to his Bristleback and gets ulted by the Windrunner because of that uh, root from Oracle. Uh, Blink forward and Zycor is doing a lot of damage here on the Bristleback, and that should be enough, I think, to finish them off, especially with that power shot coming from the backside. Uh, one for four? Or one for five in that fight? Obelisk was so close to going down that fight, but he got Doppelganger doppelgang off cooldown at the perfect time. He was able to get away from Bristle's quills up yeah. into the high grounds. He's uh, already all the way back to base and getting ready to uh, TP into this Roche pit, I expect. Does he have BOTs? No, I'm gonna have to walk here, but he's gonna TP in the area at least. And with three dead and two buybacks, H Dick are going to my H Dick, MMKR are gonna go ahead and take this Roche shot. Yeah, the whole fight was pretty well played by Kitty Rangers, I think. I'm really happy with their decision to go for a pick rather than just go for a rush. Yeah, they got right... I was concerned for a little bit because they got right in the middle of h Dick's team. And that is sort of where I feel like h Dick excels at a team, right? Where it's everyone in one place, right? And the sniper was over here just pinging. When well, I mean really pinging, it's more of a... Like a shotgun almost at this point. Uh, on to Wraith King, but the, with the blade mail and the threat of the blink forward, so, like Sniper couldn't actually hit anybody else in the fight, and that I think made a huge difference. I mean, Wraith King used down. his blink aggressively to go on Jakiro. Um, I'm, yeah, so he couldn't blink on Sniper, but the fact is, like, Sniper realized that he was not with his team, and mm -hmm. he was in an awkward position. Like, yeah, you could hit Wraith King a bit there, but you don't know where the rest of Kitty Rangers are. You don't know when Rangers are about to. Uh, blink shackle you, ult you, PL is invis on you, those sorts of things. They did have a sentry, so actually that last part might not have been so relevant. But in the heat of the moment, you don't necessarily realize, mm -hmm. you know, where your wards are. So if that is part of your thought process, it's possible that you miss <clears throat> some information like that. Nevertheless, I would say that Sniper's positioning was pretty scary in that situation. So yeah, they were going forward trying to get into the Roche Pit, so he expended a shrapnel on the Roche Pit before that fight started. Because that's where they thought uh, H MMKR were. At the end of the day, I feel like no matter what H Dick thought was going on, or where they were planning on going, their positioning as a team could have been better. Mm -hmm. Well, even still, it's the high ground question again. Like with an eighteen thousand gold lead, is that enough? Well, maybe it is. They're gonna go right up onto the high ground, blink forward. Put a Wraith Fire Blast on the Barashka Core. Probably going to expend the uh, ult here for Wraith King. Yeah, he's going to get reincarnated due to the Necrophos ult. But Mr. Obelisk is in the middle of the fight trying to do some work. Actually, he ends up going down. The Sniper able to get back from the uh, from the left side and kill him off. Zycor is going to have the same problem. Sniper's just running at him, but Saltwater's happy able to come in with his ultimate and kill off Pudge before that happens. Zycor taking quite a bit of damage. Still has 20 seconds before his ult's back up. He's able to blink away now with no damage and should be able to survive. Daddy Brian, however, going to go down in exchange. Gets assassinated. Uh, Zycor still, though, not quite enough. He has 10 seconds, and it's not going to be enough. He's going to end up going down after trying to get back into that fight. Meanwhile, Windrunner, the only hero alive, is going to just run away. Didn't even burn the Aegis. So. If you want, yeah, if you want to make a play like that against the sniper, you have to be really confident, and you have to be, you all have to be on the same page about what's happening, who you're going on. You need to have like, they did have, they did have a high ground word, which is nice, but mm -hmm. like you need to, you need to kill people quickly, and you need to take care of things as soon as possible because those situations are exactly where sniper thrives more than basically any other hero in the game. And he is just free to hit whoever he wants to. And before you realize it, half your team is dead, and the rest of you have to run away. Mm -hmm. So you just have to, like, that's, that situation is very, very good for H Dick. It's exactly what they wanted to happen. Yeah, I, I feel like without that ATOS from the Jakiro, actually, that fight goes a lot differently. Because with Wraith Fire Blast, he's able to get in, and the ATOS meant that he couldn't attack Sniper. And so Sniper was just able to walk away because he wasn't slowed by the, the Echo Saber. And then Pudge came in and ulted him. So... The Atos definitely was very relevant. I feel like it's more, in my opinion, it was more of just a bad play being punished. Mm. And however it was punished, you know, like obviously Atos punished him, but 
there's so many other ways that the play does not work out for him. Yeah, I suppose and I think that it didn't deserve to work less out. gold even is on the Pudge, then it's just a blink ult into an ice path is the same thing. So yeah, yeah, Pudge always has ults. Shakira always has ice path. Even if you get to burst one of them, you know, like mm -hmm. you're not taking care of Bristol or Sniper or Necro or those heroes. So uh, what do you think of Phantom Lancer here going for the Scotty over the heart? What do I think of that? I think, I think Heart versus Necro is not necessarily. It it doesn't make Heart bad, but it certainly makes it less um, appealing, knowing that against one of their heroes, your HP is just. It doesn't matter if you have ten thousand HP; he's still gonna potentially be able to just ult mm -hmm. you and get rid of that. Um, which obviously it still does not make Heart a bad item but it does make it worse. Mm. Whereas Scotty gives you more all around, gives you armor, gives you stats. You hit harder a little bit. The slow is relevant. It's always relevant on a hero like PL. Well, I feel like the heart though is a lot better for their siege because you can spend you know, a third of your HP and then walk away and have it back right away. You can, but you don't want to play this like a siege game. So if oh, this there's was- There's a hook like... here onto Saltwater Tappy. He gets the Lincolns from the Pudgel. But that's not enough. However, he still gets uh, gets saved by Oracle, and is able to blink away. He's probably gonna come back to full HP. It looks like. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's incredible. <laughs> so uh, dismember and uh, Reaper Scythe and assassinate and sniper right clicks all expended and uh, in yeah, exchange. Yeah, but they're all up. Yeah, in exchange, you lost the Lincolns. I guess he also lost the false promise, but that's only a 20 second cooldown or something, 30. Yeah, uh, nothing lost is going to have any impact for the... It's not going to have any impact, but yeah. Mm. Spells were used, <clears throat> things were said, feelings were hurt. There's some vacuoles. He can keep him occupied long enough for Rift King to get here. It's not going to happen, though. Absolutely not. Yeah, Cancel his TP, though, made him look bad. It's about the mind games, mm. ruining his efficiency. <clears throat> <clears throat> Game is lost and won in the mind. Bloodseeker is playing the right game. Uh, let's see, who else is getting items out? Um, I don't know if I mentioned the uh, blade mail here finished on Bloodseeker, so we're getting you know more blade mails coming out. That's also coming on Pudge. Does not have his yet, but he's working on it. Uh, There's definitely a decent amount of sources of indirect damage on H stick. You know, like people are going to take damage that you're not necessarily aiming for. Like on heroes like. Jakiro, Necro, Bristol, Sniper, Shrapnel. With that said, though, I think Bloodseeker could definitely be looking at other items that would be a little more lucrative than Blade Mill. Because mm. he's not super tanky, and he's not wanting to go in the middle of these fights yeah. like Wraith King is. I think he well, definitely... Well, he's getting a Silver Edge now. <clears throat> actually went ahead and bought up that Ultimate Orb. I don't think I agree with that either, honestly. I don't think there's a whole lot of situations where the fight is being won or lost because they can or can't burst bristle back. And even if it's about that, it's like, how often is Bloodseeker of all heroes going to be the one who's in position to do that? And sure, it gives you one more person to do that. Well, I think it's better still to don't... have Bloodseeker go in and die to burst the bristle back than to have PL do the same, yeah? Well, you don't want either to die for it, but I don't think you should be spending items and gold so that your strategy is to have one of your heroes die so that you can silver in somebody and maybe get them. Because then that still doesn't answer the problem of Sniper mm -hmm. or Jakiro or Necro or everybody else. And I, like, imagine if this was, like, Ags on Bloodseeker. What is that, maybe charges, some... right? Yeah, it gives you charges on Rupture. I think that in itself would have been, like, it wouldn't have been game-changing, but it would have been really nice in certain mm -hmm. fights, for sure. I just, I, I don't really see this Blade Mail and um, Silver Edge having a huge impact. I would have liked to see that be a Hex or even Atos. Halberd. Halberd would be really nice, honestly. So, Saltwater Taffy going for a play onto zero, but... Yeah, not really gonna have anything. Johnny Magic just gonna sit out here with the Bristleback. Say, I'm good, are you? Hook attempts, grabbing a creep. I guess Halberd wouldn't be amazing, because it still sort of has the same issues. It's just like, mm. Shadow Blade, we have to be close enough, but... I, I, I still would like to see it more. I think it gives him more options in a team fight to like shut down someone like Sniper for a while. Whereas yeah. right now he doesn't have any ways of doing that except duels, but 
you want to hopefully use yours for other things. Barashka core is about to have a Daedalus. <clears throat> he just needs, I mean, he has, yeah, he has the gold for it, just needs to make it the secret shop. He already does so much damage, anything more, it's just, it's, yeah, it's scary for sure. The yeah. sniper is very scary. As he is. <clears throat> it's very, like, this feels like the game we cast, like, what was it, two weeks ago? It's not as bad as that game. It's 52 minutes, and I don't see either team going up high ground soon. Just going naturally high ground? I, I don't either. It's definitely about trying to mm -hmm. mold the game into the game that you want to play. And for Kitty Rangers, that's finding pickoffs, getting the kills, mm -hmm. taking racks when everybody's dead. It's going to be difficult for them to get to that point, because everybody on the side of Radiant is saving buyback money. They're all playing very conservatively and defensively, and they don't even feel that bad about doing it. It's interesting that they're going for the smoke. I don't know that they agree with this. Well, it's uh, going to be spotted out by Saltwater. Atos is going to be used. Now the, now the, uh, rather, the Lincoln's going to be used. Atos used afterwards. Jakiro going to take a whole bunch of silence damage and is now going to be shackled, actually, next to Necrophos. They're both going to go down. Sniper got caught in the back line. I didn't see what happened there. I think he got chased down by Bloodseeker, but they both just fought back. Meanwhile, Break here onto Bristleback, and uh, he's down. Any buyback on Bristleback here? Oh, he has a blink forward. He not have buyback. As well as a Wraith Fire Blast, but Roshka Core able to get the the four staff away, but now that's a dieback on Roshka Core. Zycor Wraith Firing again. That's uh, like a million diebacks. Uh, that actually this... is going to be game. Yeah, it's definitely game. Oh, this, is, this is like a textbook example, I think, of not really understanding what your win condition is. And as a result, you know, like if, if they just stayed in the base, everybody stayed in the base, this game would not be over right now. It might go for another 20, 30, 40 minutes. I don't know. But like, this game would not be over if they all just stayed in base, I feel like. I think mm -hmm. that was just, just not the correct call. I don't think it would have, I don't think... Like, maybe they get a smoke, they go on one person, but their draft is just, I don't know. It, mm. it, their draft, in this situation, defends high ground. It doesn't go out of base, it doesn't smoke, it doesn't try to gank people. It stays high ground. And that's what it does, and it does that really well. So I think they just got a little bit antsy. Yeah, I mean, once you get into, like, a 54-minute game, it really does become an endurance uh, type thing, and it's difficult maybe sometimes to keep in mind exactly how to play. Uh, not how to play, but exactly, you know, how you the need right to play choice, the yeah. yeah. But that is going to be a victory now for MMKR. I believe that is 2 0, right? Was MMKR won the last game? Yes, they did. Because uh, they were dire both games. So I hope you all enjoyed. And I'll have this uploaded onto YouTube tomorrow. Not streaming on Twitch today because of the Amazon strike. And uh, I will be back on Twitch tomorrow for another cast. Hopefully, sorry, will join me. We'll find out about that. And uh, I'll see you next time.